Hello, 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 and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about flashlights and how to use them in Dead by Daylight. One of the hardest items to use in this game is definitely the flashlights due to timing or just not knowing how to use them or because there's a bug in the game that shifts how the mechanics work. Uh, we're going to be talking about all these different things in the video. So if, if you want to know how to use flashlights efficiently or maybe you're like, I tried blinding the killer, but it didn't work then this should be the video for you. If you guys are enjoying these videos, these tutorial videos, make sure to uh, like and subscribe because it really does help out a lot. The almighty algorithm appreciates when you like and watch the video to its fullest and comment. So if you want to help the channel grow, definitely do all those things. <laughs> uh, we also have some other guides on this channel for Dead by Daylight. Right now, I'm mostly just uploading Dead by Daylight content. But on Twitch, I do stream. Uh, there should be a link in the description. I stream variety of games, um, but I also do a lot of Dead by Daylight live streams as well. So if you're interested in that kind of thing as well, there it is. Now you know about it. Also, if you want to see any more guides going forward, make sure to leave some comments. Be like, hey, can you make a guide on Oni? Which I'm currently working on. Then be sure to put that in there because I do, I do read all the comments. I will reply to any if need be or like them or react to them just so you know I've seen it and it's in the works I'm in the works of making an Oni one then after that it'll probably be a doctor one and then maybe a Demogorgon I just like being fully proficient with the killers before I start making a guide with them I did the Huntress guide because I know Huntress pretty much inside and out so if you want to see more guides let me know I love making these these are super fun uh, but yeah I also want to let you guys know uh, this is the current uh, Beyond Descent update or Descent Beyond, whatever it's called. I think it's Descent Beyond, something like that, um, where there was there's there's been a lot of bugs recently with flashlights where the beam shows up at a different angle that it used to. So a lot of veteran players are just when you use flashlights, it just doesn't feel right. It's aiming slightly lower right now. There was a bug a few patches ago where it was aiming completely to the right. It was totally bad. I missed so many flashlight saves because I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. It's aiming 90 degrees to the right of me pretty much. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind going forward after a few patches, the flashlight beam might be a little bit higher. Uh, I will talk about this a little bit later. Whenever you start a match, be sure to test where the beam is whenever you're in a new patch. So flashlights. There are three different kinds of flashlights, not counting the event flashlights. There's the utility flashlight, the purple one, which is by far my favorite one, obviously. Then there is the green flashlight, the sports flashlight, and last but not least, just the common flashlight. Each of these have different, um, different effects. The normal flashlights just has eight seconds of use. That's it. Flat out, boom, done. That's the flashlight. Also, any event flashlights that are added will usually be just a duplicate of the common flashlight, but with some twist on it. The Will-O-Wisp is a Halloween one. Uh, it has a little picture of a spooky ghost and the beam is orange. And by picture of spooky ghost, I mean like when you shine the flashlight, it's a little outline of a little spooky ghost. Um, it also considerably increases the friendly ghosts in your life by 100%. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the fourth anniversary flashlight, again, same thing, except it just has a different visual. Just these ones, we'll just talk about them as a common flashlight. Sports one has eight seconds of use, same as a common flashlight, but it has a few other things. Slightly decreases the flashlight battery consumption and slightly increases the accuracy. And then the utility flashlight, you get 12 seconds of use slightly reduces accuracy just you know to help balance it but moderately increases visual beam brightness so you can see what's happening easier and moderately increases the blindness duration that's pretty good on its own there's a few different add-ons for flashlights but the best ones by far are the ones that increase the charges so the best combination you can have is the long life battery the green battery or we tested this. We literally just tested this. You longtime veterans, you say the low amp filaments. I used to think this as well. The low amp filaments are maybe a quarter of a second to half a second longer than this. It's the difference between these is actually nothing. We have some footage I'm going to show 
Crow and I were holding the flashlights for the entire time. We both had the different add-ons. He had the yellow one, I had the low end filaments. I started half a second early due to, due to Discord delay, maybe even less than that, and we ran out at the same time. So these add-ons are pretty much the same. Um, but this will make it so your flashlight can last for a very long time. I'm gonna put some footage on screen right now. You're gonna be able to see. I'm just holding the flashlight, walking around. That's insane amount of usage. Rarely will you go through this much usage unless you're able to <laughs> repeatedly blind the killer. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So the first add-on we're going to talk about is the odd bulb. It tremendously increases the, the beam's visual brightness, just so you can see it easier. Uh, tremendously increases, increases the blindness duration. Uh, that can be fun. Uh, the killer will think they're being re-blinded over and over again when really it was just one blind. It's it's good to know. Um, so it, it can be good, but again, charges trumps all. Like, it's, it's disgusting how many charges you can get, especially if you run, like, say, streetwise or, and or built the last. It's just... Oh, oh, we'll talk about those perks later. We got the high-end sapphire lens. Which moderately widens the beams, uh, the flashlight beam, so it makes it easier to get a blind. But keep in mind, you will have to shift the beam as you're blinding them, uh, because it does get thinner as you start to blind. Uh, slightly increases the flashlight's beam, moderately increases the beam's visual uh, brightness, and moderately increases the blindness duration. Uh, so you know that's that's kind of cool. But again, charges are better. I guess if you're running a flashlight, it's better than nothing. But still. Uh, you got the intense halogen, which considerably increases the brightness of the 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 beam's visual. Considerably increases the blindness duration as well. And a lot of these stack, by the way. Like, actually, this one apparently doesn't stack, but this one does stack. So these two can totally blind a killer for a healthy time. Uh, the focus lens is just a worse version of the high-end lens. And then this lens is just a worse version of both of these lenses, right? That's how most of these work, so I won't reread them every time. The rubber grip slightly increases the accuracy of the flashlight. Cool, I would personally never run that. The optic, this is just, again, different iterations of these lenses, pretty much. Uh, this is the weaker battery. I guess if you don't have a yellow battery, you can use this instead. That's just fine. You lose two seconds of usage, whatever. The leather grip, worse version than the rubber grip. Like, all these things you can read in-game if if you're not keeping up. I just don't want to make this too long. Uh, power bulb, just a worse version of the other bulbs, and so on and so forth. So, those are the combinations. I would always bring charge add-ons. Um, especially if you're learning flashlight, you want to be able to have as many chances as you can. Uh, but yeah, the next part we're going to go into how to read the visuals of uh, blinding a killer and the flashlights and all that. So when you blind a killer, you're going to see a few things. While you're blinding them, there's going to be a beam in the center of your flashlight that is going to get thinner and thinner. Once it gets like to its thinnest and the killer gets blinded, you'll see like usually if there's not a bug, You'll see a little flicker, a little flash. It'll get wide really quickly. And if you look off to the left, you'll see an event point uh, killer blind. That is how you know the killer is blind at that moment. So the beam's getting thinner. Killer blind event. And then you know they're blinded. Another thing to look out for is Lightborn. Um, they reworked Lightborn. It's... You know, pretty strong now. It's it's actually uh, interesting. So if there's a team, if you're a team and you have four flashlights, a good killer will probably put on Lightborn just to say, "Huh, your items are irrelevant." Just like that, they're all useless. Um, when Lightborn happens, a few things will happen. Your beam. So one thing that'll happen is as you're blinding killers if you're not really looking at their eyes or maybe they're breaking a pallet so their their camera is looking up and down the beam will like slowly get thinner and you won't get the blind in time right in lightborn the beam slowly gets thinner so at first you think you're just missing the flashlight blind okay 
Um, but no, it's just, it's very slow. If, if you're looking at the footage, you'll see the beam get thin very, very, like half the flashlights being used just to get all the way to the end. And even when you think they're blind, they're not actually blind. Nothing, nothing happens. You don't get any points off to the left, no event score. Um, if you look in the bottom right, when you're finished wasting your flashlight, uh, you'll see a lightborn debuff just to tell you why it's not working. And I'm running a perk in the footage called Distortion. What Distortion does is it allows you to not be seen by killer auras. So like, say, barbecue. Um, whenever something procs where they can normally see your aura, Distortion counters that and uses a token. So if you look, my aura is being revealed as I'm trying to blind them as well. So in a lot of situations, um, people will try to blind killers at pallets or at windows just to annoy them and just to buy more time to get to another loop. But with Lightborn, that makes it so it doesn't work and they can also see your aura through walls and know exactly what you're doing. It's, it's something to be aware of. It's not a common perk to be ran. But if you ever do run into it, you have to know that you're not going to get a blind. It's physically impossible to get a killer blind. You're just wasting your item. So the next part, we're going to be talking about the best time to blind killers and to flashlight saves. So the best time to blind a killer is when they're stuck in an animation. Because if they're not stuck in an animation, most killer who has more than 30 hours in this game... Okay, that's even a high bar. Most killers that have more than 10 hours in this game will probably know when they're being blinded by a flashlight to look away, look up, look down, completely turn around. They will look away from the beam. The best thing to do is to look up or look down. Like look at the floor or look at the sky. It'll look like you're still being blinded, but you won't. Um, just for you killers out there. So the best thing to do is to look away. But if they're stuck in an animation, such as vaulting a window, um, picking up a survivor, they can't look away. They're stuck in the animation until it's finished doing what it's doing. So the best time to blind a killer usually is when they're vaulting a window, as I'm showing in the on screen. Or the best time to do it is when they're picking up the survivor. Get over there, get over there. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, that wall! No! The wall! Now, keep in mind, Saving, getting a flashlight save is one of the highest skill cap things as a survivor. Right, right beside moonwalking. Because every update, they usually end up breaking something. And you have to have perfect timing. And I mean you have to have perfect timing. So one thing to note, as well as survivor is being picked up. If you blind the killer too early, it'll say killer blind. You blind them, but because you started maybe slightly too early, they won't drop the survivor when they're done their animation, and you'll have to re-blind them if they don't look away. So you have to have absolute perfect timing. You have to do it early enough so they can't look away when their animation is done, but start late enough that you don't blind them too early. It's like dropping a pallet when trying to get a save. If someone picks up a survivor on top of a pallet and you drop it when they're still in the animation, it won't do anything. It'll just push them backwards, they finish the animation and walk away. But if you wait until the animation's done and then stun them with the pallet, they'll drop the survivor. Same concept applies. You have to have perfect timing. So the best thing I'd say is honestly, practice. Maybe watch, a, watch some videos, watch some other streamers that are good survivors and that usually tend to carry flashlights. And you'll just sort of start to learn roughly where you need to start. I usually go off the visuals and the audio that the killer and survivors give off while getting picked up. So if you listen carefully while the survivor gets picked up, they make like a certain uh or whatever. And also, if you watch the survivors when they get usually for most killers, this applies as they start to move the body over their shoulder and onto the shoulder that's usually roughly the, the best time to start but every killer animation is different and you gotta you gotta just know the timing um so that's that just takes practice it comes naturally 
but that's probably why you're like, oh man, I, 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 got a, I got a flashlight saved, but the killer didn't get dropped. Or the survivor didn't get dropped. It means you started too early. <clears throat> so learn the timings. Even in the recording of this video, because the beam was slightly lower, it just felt off. And I kept missing the flashlight saves. Like, I had like six times in a row where I could have swore I was timing it perfectly. And I just... I was slightly too early, and it just didn't drop the survivor. So I have plenty of footage of that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's usually better to do later than you think. Um, but yeah. Another thing to do, when you're preparing for a flashlight save, positioning is so much. Positioning is so important. You need to be around the survivor when they get downed. Break line of sight so the killer doesn't see you and you need them to start picking up the survivor get in front of them If you have to if they're looking at a wall, you can't do anything uh, Get in front of them and then blind them That's a lot of things to time out perfectly keep in mind You got to time the flashlight save perfectly among getting into position not being seen by the killer beforehand There's a lot of things that can go wrong flashlight saves are really difficult to do, but they're so satisfying when it happens <laughs> Um, so positioning is a lot of things usually when someone gets down they'll be down at some sort of loop near a window maybe and you can sort of expect the killer to go and pick them up right away uh, smarter killers will wait a second kind of look around see if any survivors are nearby be ready for that uh, try your best not to get downed when attempting a flashlight save because if you do guess what at least half of your team is out of the equation and the killer has a ton of pressure. They're about to hook someone and they just got you downed. Your team's in a bad, bad spot when that happens. So again, positioning is super important. Some perks like Sprint Burst and Dead Hard can help you out. It'll allow you to either, you can be out of position, but if you have your Sprint Burst wet ready or if you have it 99, which is letting your exhaustion run out, until it's like 99% and then you can use it on demand whenever you'd like by by uh, walking for a second and then re-sprinting. Um, this will allow you to be out of position and then while they start the pickup, you can use your exhaustion perk to get in front of the killer and blind them. Uh, I got some footage where I was with Crow and Tyler and I dead hard a past and got the blind and yes you use your last defense but it it prevents that person from being hooked right let's say they're on last hook and i still have hooks to give i'd rather be killed than my friend be killed because then we still have our full team right so keep that in mind you can totally use exhaustion perks to get the save next thing i'll be showing you is locker blinds um some lockers on certain tiles say a teammate gets pulled from a locker and then the other teammate is nearby and he's able to blind the killer. And then he drops the person from the locker and then the person gets back into the locker and you rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. The timing on this is totally different from getting picked up. So again, you got to learn the timing. I got some footage on screen where you can see you got to have the right angle, like the perfect angle with the perfect timing. And then if you do that over and over again, you can literally waste the killer's time. They can't do anything. They can't grab you from the locker because if they do, well, you get blinded, they drop the survivor. They can't chase after the other person because then they just start looping Killer Shack. It's such a bad situation and you honestly just have to ignore them. It's a little broken right now. Um, in the future, they might patch that out where you can't get the locker blinds. Another thing to know about flashlights is chain blinding. Chain blinding is so, so good. When you blind a killer, say at a pallet or at a window, if you reapply that blind, like let's say you blind them when they're breaking a pallet. If you reapply a blind by just clicking your flashlight at their eyes, just wait until you get the point event again. I got some footage, you can see me chain blinding here. If you time it perfectly, you can blind them for very minimal flashlight usage. Like it, it'll take half a second to reapply a blind if you chain blind it. So let's say the killer breaks a pallet or vaults through a window. If you blind them right after that, it allows you to get more and more distance because now they have to wait for the new blindness to wear off. So chain blinding is 
usually easy to pull off. They just have to not look away from you, not look up or not look down. And then you're able to reblind them and waste more of their time. Remember, Dead by Daylight is a game where you want to waste the killer's time. It's not necessarily just about escaping because you need your whole team to be working together. If every teammate played to waste as much time as humanly possible and not just survive, sur like, that that's red ranks. <laughs> that's red ranks right there. Is playing to waste time. Knowing how to loop properly, looping is just wasting time. Getting a flashlight save is wasting the killer's time because guess what? They spent all that time down to survivor, picked up the survivor, and they got nothing from it because you just saved them. That's wasting time. It's all, it's all the time game. So being able to chain blind, wasting a few more seconds, it's so good. And it might save your life in the meantime by allowing you to get to a loop. Or another time that you can like chain blind is after you get a flashlight save, a good thing to do is to reblind the killer so the person you just saved and yourself can get some more distance. Again, you're just you're helping your team. So chain blinding is definitely one thing. It's not hard to do. I highly recommend practicing it if you want to get into flashlights. Uh, it should not be that difficult. Some good perks you can use with uh, items, in this case flashlights, is Streetwise. Streetwise allows you to reduce the consumption rate of items by 25% for you and allies within 8 meters. Uh, this effect will also last for allies for an extra 15 seconds at a, after leaving you. Um, but mainly, it, it's for you. Uh, so, if you run this, you'll get 25% more usage from your flashlight. So let's, let's do this right here. You got 12 seconds of utility flashlight, right? You got an extra 6 seconds, an extra 4 seconds on top of that. So you got, what, that's 22 seconds of flashlight usage by default. Now you're adding an extra 25% on top of that. You should be able to blind the killer for the entire match at this point. Like, you might as well chalk it up to, this is this is overkill. You shouldn't need this many charges. But that that's that's pretty much what Streetwise is. This is a very good perk to run with flashlights. Uh, actually, any item, but flashlights especially. Another good perk that just recently came out that is good to use with flashlights is Built to Last. If you pair Streetwise and Built to Last together with a very good flashlight, let's let's do this real quick. So, 22 seconds of use, right? Plus Streetwise, you get an extra 25%. And then Built to Last. So let's say somehow you go through your entire flashlight. Within 10 seconds, you get 50% of your charges back at tier 3. That's half your flashlight back. You just got 11 seconds of usage back, plus an extra 25% from Streetwise. You can almost blind the killer for a minute straight. Actually, yeah, you probably can. <laughs> that 10 seconds of recharge will, will be different, but yeah, you can waste... Like, if you're up against a Wraith, they're they're done. They they can't run away because you burn them every time. They're done. They're dead. It's over. It's like 30 decisive strikes in a row. But yeah, these are some just good perks around with flashlights. And especially if you're learning flashlights and you need more charges, this is pretty good. It allows you to make mistakes, not necessarily get blinds right away. Um, another thing to note, uh, when you're blinding killers at a pallet or when vaulting, this is a good opportunity to blind them because they're stuck in an animation again. But not all killers have the same camera angle while they vault and while they break pallets. Uh, people like Hag and I think Spirit at Windows. When Hag is breaking a pallet, you can't blind her. When Spirit is vaulting a window, I don't think you can blind her. Some killers, and you just have to learn this from experience. Some killers, you just can't, you can't blind them there. A good rule of thumb is if they're a tall killer, usually you can blind them. Like Trapper and Michael Myers, they can be blinded at both windows and pallets. Uh, but yeah, that, that's another thing to note. And last but not least, I'm going to leave a little tidbit. Um, this, this tech is very popular right now. A lot of people know it and experienced killers usually know how to counter that if, if they're prepared. Uh, most killers won't. 
but some of them will. So we're going to be talking about the CJ Tech. Uh, there's plenty of... I, I don't know why it's called the CJ Tech. There's plenty of videos out there that tell you how to do the CJ Tech. But pretty much what it is, is essentially killers to pick up a survivor and to break a pallet, it is the same button, okay? It's spacebar for PC, I don't know what it is for console. To pick up a survivor and break a pallet, it is both spacebar, okay? Keep that in mind. Now, when a survivor vaults a pallet, a killer cannot break a pallet. So they can't break that same pallet if you're vaulting it at the same time. Now, why would anyone do that? Well, you see, if there happens to be a survivor at their feet, it removes the option of breaking the pallet, and then the only option left is while they're hitting spacebar, will be to pick up the survivor. So this, essentially what the CJ tech is, I'll show it in the video so you can see it. This, this isn't a perfectly executed one, and it works better if you have like resilience and spine chill so you can vault slightly faster. Um, but what it is, is when, let's say you have to use the pallet and stun the killer and your friend is down there. If they're on the other side, when the killer goes to break the pallet, which is usually half a second after the stun, if you vault right before that, when their thumb goes to hit spacebar, they won't be able to react fast enough to this unless they're pre-expecting this. When their thumb goes to hit spacebar, they'll, instead of breaking the pallet, be forced to pick up the survivor. And then, if you quickly fast vault back, you can get the blind just in time. Freeing your friend. This is a very hard tech to pull off, but I just wanted to add it into the video because well, what's a flashlight video without the CJ tech, right? If you, if you ever have this happen to you, don't be mad, just respect it. Again, if you ever see it happen, like you're watching a streamer or something, this is very hard to pull off. Because again, it's this technique is becoming very popular very fast. I would say it's a well-known tech. And so a lot of veteran killers will be like, oh, you just threw the pallet down, are you gonna try to CJ tech? And they'll wait for you to vault over, and then they'll just hit you, right? <laughs> uh, never, Unless you know 100%, like you know they're a bad killer or they're green ranks or something, and you can just you can just feel it in your bones. Never, never, never try the CJ tech when you're injured. Put it this way, your teammate's down, if you're injured, and you mistime it by half a second, you do something wrong, and you get downed as well, that's two people dead. That's half your team taken out of the equation. Good luck recovering from that. Good luck. Never, never try it when you're injured. Unless, like, the gens are done, or maybe there's one gen left. Even then, just only do it when you're full health. Uh, but yeah. I think, I think we've covered everything. No, we didn't. One more thing I wanted to cover as well is some killers have the ability to crouch down. And what a, like, not like pig crouch down, not like ghost face crouch down. But they can lean over and put something on the ground. Think of Trapper, he leans over, activates a bear trap. Think of Hag, she leans over, scratches into the dirt. Think of Demogorgon, he leans over, puts down a portal. If this is a really good killer, and they suspect a flashlight save, well, let's say you've already blinded before and you've already tried to do a flashlight save. If he expects a blind, or they expect a blind, what they will do is they will lean over the survivor, they'll put down a bear trap on them. They'll put down a, a dirt trap on here. Here, I was trying to replicate it with Tyler. Um, and if if you're watching, I'm trying to get him to lean over on the body. And if done right, it'll look like you're picking up the survivor when in reality, you're just placing a trap. If we put the animation side by side, not accounting, uh, just imagine the body's right underneath there. If you're not an, like a godly player, you won't notice a difference. When adrenaline is going, when you have to time everything perfectly, you're not thinking about what ifs. You're thinking about when. So if if the killer leans over, be be mindful of this. And if you're if you guys are killers, and if you want to bait out a flashlight save, you're one of these killers, this is a very good way of doing it. Lean over onto the body and they'll be like, oh, he's going for the save. And then when you just cancel out of that ability don't place a full trap or maybe you do place a full bear trap 
or maybe uh, you you don't as, as soon as you're done doing that you're able to pursue the other person and get a hit right and then guess what there's no one else that's gonna flashlight save them the one person that was getting ready is now being scrambled away unless the whole team's there um, but yeah so that's that's a good way of doing it and again if you're a killer and you're going against flashlights Lightborn, or always pick up a survivor while looking at a wall, a tree, something tall enough to break line of sight. Uh, last thing I want to add was uh, burning killers. So there, to the best of my knowledge, is three killers whose power is directly affected by the flashlights. Uh, only two of them you'll actually see in practical use. Uh, the Hag and the Wraith. The hag traps can be disabled by shining a flashlight on them. They can also become visible if you shine it for a few seconds rather than, I don't know, like if you shine it for a little bit, you can see the traps easier. It's highlighted. And then if you shine it on it for long enough, it'll disable the trap. Um, the wraith is the more common one you burn. Whenever the wraith is in his cloak, if you just shine your flashlight on him, It'll burn him. I'd shown in the, that's what a burn is. A flashlight will pull him out of his cloak. And you can burn a killer faster than he can uncloak, even with add-ons. So if you start burning him and you see him start uncloaking, it's okay. Just hold the flashlight. He will get stunned. And the last killer, which you probably didn't know you could affect with your flashlight, is a nurse. So the nurse can actually be burned but any nurse with even a quarter of a brain <laughs> or that has played this game for more than 10 hours <laughs> will know that she should not be able to get burned. You can only burn a, a nurse when she's holding her blink. But it usually takes long enough to burn a killer that she's going to let go of her blink and then all the progress is gone. But if the nurse, for whatever reason, is holding their blink, you can burn them little, little little fun fact little tidbit but that's 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 gonna be it that that's burning in a nutshell okay i think i've covered everything this video is going on long enough again i just want to let you guys know leave comments L let me know what you want to see i'll do an in-depth guide a little review try to try to give you little tips little tidbits uh but yeah that's that's gonna be it for now guys i hope y'all enjoyed love y'all i'll see you later and uh until next time peace got the high-end uh, sapphire lens i almost said serif lens uh we streetwise allows you to reduce the cons streetwise i need to drink some water <laughs> streetwise okay we're drinking water streetwise allows you to reduce the consumption Wow, what is happening? Streetwise allows you to reduce the consumption rate of items by 25%. There we go, let's try that again. Counting any event flashlights. Wow, flashlights. Azeroth, nice. Come on, Blood Lodge. <laughs> it's just so good for showing this stuff. <clears throat> so, hold on, let's see. What's the most open map? Uh, Blood Lodge or the Asylum. The Asylum's got the big building in the middle, but Blood Lodge is yeah. really open. <laughs> I guess I could have just set the map. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> True. We'll get one of the auto havens. <laughs> oh, I'm so good yeah. at this. <laughs> <laughs> is that two videos in a row? I'm like, come on, Blood Lodge. In the corner, demon. In the corner. Back. Back. 
back, you demon.